Welcome here in my channel. This is Teacher V and we're back again on our mathematics lesson for today. And it's about theorems on kites. Natapos na tayo sa trapezoids ng nakaraan. At the same time sa mga parallelograms. This time, pupunta naman tayo sa kites. And alam ko, pamilya na kayo sa itsura ng kites. Kasi siguro, nung kayo ay maliliit pa, may mga bata pa, isa sa mga hobby ninyo ay maglaro ng kites tuwing summer. So, ano nga ba ang kites sa mathematics? It is a quadrilateral in which two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. As you can see in our figure, yung adjacent sides na pinatawag natin ay itong segment ML and segment NN. So, yan yung adjacent sides at masasabi natin na they are equal. Isa pang adjacent sides ng ating kites is yung segment LK and segment NK. So, adjacent sides sila and we can say that they are congruent. And sa ating kites, meron din mga iba't ibang theorems na kailangan din nating tandaan. So, meron tayong dalawang theorems na pag-uusapan dito. Unahin muna natin itong una. So, theorem 10. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other. This is our kite, W-O-R-D. And meron tayong diagonals, dalawang diagonals. Una, yung segment W-R and segment O-D. They are perpendicular to each other. Pag sinabi kasi natin perpendicular, pag nag-intersect or nagtagpo yung dalawang linya, may magubuong 90 degrees na angle or right angle. In this case, nabuo yung 90 degrees natin dito. Pati rito, ayan, sa apat na angle natin dito. So, they are perpendicular to each other. That's why we can say that segment WR is perpendicular to segment O. At another theorem is yung area naman ng ating kite. Theorem number 11, the area of a kite is half the product of the length of its diagonals. Kalahate ng product ng diagonals natin. This is our formula. So, area of a kite is equal to one half of the product of diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. So, ipakita natin yung mga examples natin related dito. First, let's name the pairs of congruent and adjacent sides in this figure. Ang unang congruent pair, ang unang pair of congruent and adjacent sides ay yung segment ML and segment MN. So, we can say that segment ML is congruent. So, congruent ang ibig sabihin nito, congruent to MN. Isa pang pares is yung segment LK is congruent to segment NK. So, by the way, napakita ko na siya sa inyo kanina, di ba? So, they are congruent. Next, how about if I have the measurement of segment LM, which is 7, ang question is the measurement of MN. Kung ito ay 7, ano ang measurement ng MN? Okay, that's correct. Segment MN is 7. How about number 3? If segment KN is 10.5, what is segment KL? So they are adjacent. And congruent, so we can say that segment KL is also 10.5. Another problem, if segment LN is 7 centimeters, so where is segment LN? KLN and KM, so the other diagonal is 13. What is the area? So this is our formula para sa kite, one half times the product of two diagonals. Sinulat lang natin siya, yung LN, which is 7 cm. So, yun yung first diagonal natin. And then, yung KM, na 13 cm or yung pangalawang diagonal natin. At hahanapin natin yung area. Isa-substitute lang natin yan sa ating formula. Or, ipagta-times natin yung dalawang diagonals, then, kunin yung kalahati niya or one-half nung product nitong dalawang diagonals. So, 7 times 13 is 91. And then, ano ang kalahati ng 91? Okay. One half of 91 is equal to 
45.5 cm squared. So, may squared kasi area. So, kalahati lang nitong 91, yun ang magiging ating area. Next, if the area is 96 cm squared and segment LN is 8 cm, what is KM? So, this time, given na yung area, meron na area, meron na rin isang diagonal, at ang hahanapin na lang natin ay yung measurement tung isa pang diagonal. So, yung LN is 8, tapos ang hahanapin natin is yung segment KM. Sulat lang natin yung mga given, ayan, at ito yung nawawala, yung segment KM. Pero we just denote it by x. So, lagyan lang natin ng x kasi ito nga yung nawawala, yung km. Substitute natin sa ating formula. So, ang formula natin, area ng kite is equal to one half of the product of the two diagonals. So, isulat natin yung area niya na 96 is equal to one half. Then, yung ln, which is 8, times natin sa x. So, bakit x? Kasi unknown or hindi natin alam ang sukat ng ating km. Then simplify, pag times lang muna natin yung nasa loob ng parenthesis, so that is equal to 8x. Then we multiply both sides to 2 para makancel yung 1 half dito sa side na to at maiwan yung 8x. Then here, 2 times 96 is 192 and in this side, matitira na lang yung 8x. Then we divide both sides to 8 para Matanggal yung 8 na katabi na x at maiwan na lang yung x. 192 divided by 8 is 24. So therefore, x or yung ating km, segment km, is equal to 24 centimeters. Next, if the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 63, what is the measurement of angle 3? So ito yung angle 2 natin at ang sukat niya is 63. Ano naman ang measurement nitong angle 3? Bakit may 90 dito sa angle 1? So, tandaan, may nabubuong uh, 90 degree dito dahil perpendicular nga yung ating diagonal. So, may 90 na tayo, then may 63. At para makuha natin itong angle 3, kailangan makuha natin yung angle dito. Kasi kung ano yung angle dito sa angle L, M, K, or dito sa angle na to, kung ano angle dito, yun na rin ang angle dito sa angle 3. So, kailangan makuha natin yung sukat mo na rito. Or, we can just simply say or apply the triangle sum theorem, wherein it states that the total sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180. Diba? Dapat, ang total angle ng triangle ay 180. So, lagi yung 180. So, therefore, we can say that the measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 1 and the measurement of angle 3, dahil yung angle 3 ay equal din naman dito, so ito, yung sukat nito, ay equal to 180. Okay? Then, substitute natin yung measurement ng angle 2 is 63 plus yung measurement ng angle 1, 90, and yung measurement ng angle 3, is equal to 180. Sorry, may plus dito, may plus. Okay, so that's why we have 63 plus 90, we have 153 plus the measurement of angle 3 is equal to 180. So, pinag-add lang natin itong 63 and 90. That's why we have 153. And para makuha yung angle 3, we have to subtract 153 dito sa 180. So, 180 minus 153, the answer is 27. So, pag in mo yan, okay, so 27 yung angle 3. So, ibig sabihin, itong angle dito is 27 din. So, pag in mo yan, 27 plus 90 plus 63, ang sagot dyan ay 180. Diba? So, ganun. So, bawat triangle dapat 180 yung kanyang total sum nung kanyang interior angles. How about another example? If the measurement of angle LKN, nasan yung LKN? Ayan, yung LKN natin is 39. So, 39 ang sukat niya. Ano daw ang measurement ng MKN? So, angle MKN, ayan siya, MKN. So, ito lang. So, paano mo makukuha yung sukat niya? 
So, tama kayo, kunin mo lang yung kalahate nitong 39. Okay, yung kalahate nitong seg angle MKN. So, 39 divided by 2 or yung kalahate ng 39, the answer is 19.5. So, 19.5 to, yung angle na to. Then, yung angle 5 is 19.5. Pag pinag-add mo, kabuuan is 39. Okay? So, ayan. Nai-apply natin yung iba't ibang theorems ng kite sa pagsusolve ng mga unknown measurements ng ating kite. So, tandaan nyo lang yun. Lalo na yung formula natin ng area. Area of the kite is equal to 1 half of the product of diagonals. And yung diagonals ng kite daw natin ay perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that's it. I hope na may natutunan ka sa video ko ngayon. At i-click mo na yung like dyan at share mo na rin sa mga friends mo para matuto sila sa math. At lalong ganahan si Teacher V na gumawa ng mga videos tungkol sa mathematics. Pwede ka rin magtanong kung may mga tanong ka pa at gusto pang malaman, may suggestions ka dyan, pwede mo yan ilagay sa ating comment section. And, kita-kita tayo ulit sa susunod kong video. Bye-bye!